Uh, we do some pretty bizarre and pretty crazy things in this lab. What we do back here is we take product in early design, early production. Uh, the earlier the better uh, in our chambers. We step our chambers down. If you look at that far right chart on the left graph, it looks like a staircase down in red. What that does is we step it down every 15 minutes, uh, 10 degrees, trying to find the lower operating limit, the lower destruct limit. When we find our lower limits, we increase it up to 30 C and start stepping it up, trying to find the upper operating limit, upper destruct limit. Uh, uh, the chambers go up to 200 C. We could take it up to 200 C, all it would do is just melt it and it won't tell us anything. So we have to tear it up uh, constructively to get as much information out of it as possible. As you can see here, uh, I have two uh, uh, PSG products going right now. This is how they actually are in the test. Uh, this here is a completely gutted uh, portable unit. This is the board, the display with all the plastics removed. This way we can get as much vibration to the uh, PCA printed circuit assembly as possible. The more vibration we can get to it, the better response, uh, the more issues we can see. What it does is it goes from uh, high temperature to low temperature within a matter of seconds. So we might have this center up here that that closed maybe 60 C. Watch that hot. And then this one might be about minus 20 C. So all it's going to do is raise the uh, product or whatever the test up and down, uh, just going to with extreme temperatures and giving it that stress temperature test and making sure nothing happens to the, uh, to the product itself. Uh, the is a real-time x-ray, so and I'm not going to take any of Henry's wording there, so Henry's going to talk to you about the real-time x-ray. So if you look on the screen here, if I move the joystick around, you'll see the image will change because it's real-time. We don't have to wait for any developing right there, live in the first. And if you look very carefully, you see tiny fine wires. Um, before we put them into this test, we've got a uh, test, uh, some equipment over there that we test the hinges or uh, the clutches first. Uh, we want to make sure that design is working well before we put them onto our, our, our materials. So we'll qualify the hinges first up to over 25,000 cycles. Um, testing. Um, also, we have customized testing that there's something new. Um, it's out there, we have to do a special test on it. We pick something up and try and have some testing this year. So this test uh, what we're concerned with here. So a couple things again. The plastic, the bezel plastic that goes around the panel making sure that it's designed properly. It may be too thin, it may be the corners, it may be too sharp. So if it's too sharp, it might break the glass. So we want to make sure nothing happens. do this every once in a while. Uh, what we do is there was some concern about panels cracking. The thinner the notebook gets, the more exposed that this machine is, is a compression test machine. It's capable of 25,000 pounds of force down. We're not going to be using that today. What I have under here is a steel foot. And if you can see this, you see how big the steel foot is. And we're going to put that panel right there into that steel foot. If you'll pardon me, I'm sorry, sir, I'm gonna have to sleep on this. What we're gonna do, we're gonna run that steel foot down a little closer to that panel. 150. You see the cover deforming? 220, 260. There's the pop at 280 pounds. Let's retract. Here's an altitude chamber. Um, obviously, it's not running. The one of the biggest challenges for computer designs these days is altitude because every time we get bigger memory and bigger hard drive that spins faster, everything runs faster. We got a nice processor. 
what they do is dump waste heat. So every time we change generations of processors, we're typically bumping up how many watts are required to run the process. But what we do here is we make sure that customers that use our products at altitudes, and the world is becoming more inhabited at higher altitudes than it used to be, actually, um, that their unit functions properly and that we still achieve cooling that's uh, sufficient. Behind you is a soft flow chamber, and that is a corrosion test. What we're trying to do here is make sure that if we make something here and ship it somewhere else, or we make something in China and ship it here, that it doesn't rust on the way or corrode it to a use. Sure our products have some kind of protection on them. So this is what this gun is for. We have a couple of lead and non-operationally. Um, uh, from an operational point, we go up to about 10,000 volts around the, uh, the butt area, and then uh, we'll go up to about 50,000 volts all around the chassis, and then in the non-operational mode, we'll go up to about 20,000 volts, uh, going at about every 2,000 volts, checking to see uh, if it uh, turns on and nothing matters. Sorry, letting the charge up. Vibration test, so obviously when we're being shipped in an aircraft or truck, even by sea, there's vibration that happens. The foam not only protects against shock, it also has to protect, what we've got here is an electrodynamic shaker that is exactly analogous to a speaker. We've got a big amplifier, we've got a coil, and instead of a uh, cone, we have an armature. The armature moves up and down. Right now, this would be the equivalent of music. This is a random vibration from 10 to 300 hertz. All frequencies are represented. You can see we have a nice Gilead notebook here. A nice new product. And what we're going to do is a portion of a very specific mill standard. What we're going to do here is drop this unit on those two inches. I'll give you a count of three. One. Two, three. You can see we have the CD has ejected, but that locks back in place. I come in here and rest. <laughs> I don't hear the phone ring. <laughs> so this is a hemi-anechoic chamber. That anechoic means that there's no echoes. That's what these fiberglass wedges are for. They're designed to absorb the test modes that we run. Our idle mode, we exercise the hard drive. If it has an optical drive, we test that. Uh, we run a stress test on the CD. So the basic idea is that we work with the thermal engineers get kind of a balance between keeping all the key components cool and then reducing the other the basic measurement that's done uh, is a sound power measurement for that we remove the table and you see we have microphones all around it so we capture the total energy as being uh, the total acoustic energy This is the antenna measurement facility, and unlike everything else in this building, uh, this is not an EMC facility. Uh, EMC is electromagnetic compatibility, and it's how the product reacts with the electrical events in the environment. This facility is used to measure the antenna patterns for cell phones and for broadband, broadband networks. Committee and FCC defines radiative emissions testing. Um, measurements in here can be done from 30 megahertz to 40 gigahertz. Um, this 10 meter range between the antenna and sorry, the turntable and the antenna behind you. 
So in, in this test, what we're measuring is the energy that the computer generates that comes out of the power cord or any uh, telecommunications port, a, a modem cable or a network cable. Um, the point of the test is for lower frequency emissions, emissions below 30 megahertz. Um, the computer isn't really big enough to be an effective antenna, but the building and the wiring in the building is. So there's limits to how much energy um, you're allowed to put down those wires so that you don't interfere with TV sets or radios, AM radios. So when you have a bad day at home and your computer crashes, do you come here and get revenge? Oh yeah. <laughs> <laughs>